Blood Glacier. Also a song. Is it a song? Oh. God damn it, my mind has gone blank with the name of the fucking thing. From Metalocalypse. Death Clock. It's a Death Clock song. Blood Glacier. Blood Glacier. I don't know what's happening. They actually did a song called Blood Ocean. Oh. Blood I didn't Glacier watch that is the fro it's it's the cool version of Blood Ocean, literally. See, I never watched that show because I kind of got the feeling that, like, since I don't like metal and I don't follow metal, that I won't get anything about this, and I was right. And since I'm a metal fan, I found it amusing, generally. Especially the episode when they go to Finland. Are they not from Finland? I no, thought metal, from... like, only existed in Scandinavia. No, in Death Clocks universe, uh, they're the biggest band ever, but most of them are American. <gasps> a couple of Swedes. A scandal! <clears throat> and, um, but they go to Finland and they accidentally raise a cave troll by playing some forbidden music. And it lays waste to Finland, and then they have to put it to sleep again by they, playing by playing sort of traditional Finnish instruments. Do they the fight it with a, hyd a hydraulic press? No. They um whenever they try to put it to sleep again fails, they uh they throw they throw their death phone, new spiky phones that they they mm -hmm. um that they uh, sponsored, and uh, and it, it swallows it and it dies. So a patron requested this. Yes. And we watched it. It's a German movie. It's Austrian. It's actually Austrian? Austrian. So it's called Blach Glacier in yes. Austrian. Blach Glacier. But apparently the, the English like name is The Station, even though quite obviously it says Blood Glacier on there in English. Actually, the English version is Blood Glacier. The Station is the literal translation of its name, if it's Austrian name. But I'm pretty sure there's two, uh, there's two words in German or Austrian translated into Blood Glacier because it was like Blach Glacier. On the thing, on the, on the screen, it, it said Das yeah, but it said on the, yeah, but, on the, but that's because I think that's the, the anglicized. But anyway, a patron request. Which patron requested this? Which pa Hey. I have a memory like a sieve and I'm so I'm sorry. assuming it's someone. You're just trying to make me look no, bad. No, not. Because it was a recent one, so I figured you might remember. Well, Although, the page, the patron in question is so wonderful because he suggested a bunch of films I've never heard of, including this one, Branded, that I can't wait to see, where it's like They Live if the aliens didn't just make you sort of see subliminal things, but giant ma mascot brands attack and kill people, and it's like, oh, you oh, showed me the trailer for this. That looks fucking awesome. I don't know how to feel about this. I don't know if it's about capitalism or psychology or Yeah. What. But anyway, so I was expecting this to be really lousy because a lot of the things that people want you to watch are really, really bad. But it's not. It's just foreign. Yeah, this was a decent, yeah. low budget. Not no, well, you know, not low, low budget, budget by big Hollywood yeah, standards. It? You know, it's it was, was made it? in two thousand and thirteen, and the special effects aren't quite as good as the thing. But then again, they're doing practical effects. Yeah. And it's not with a lower budget and uh, without Rob Bottin, so you know. They did very well. The only flaw was that I had to put my glasses on because there was no English language dub. Yeah. So we had to look at the subtitles. I mean, basically, you've got this um, alpine, at least I think it's alpine, uh, sort of research thing on a glacier, and it's like, oh no, climate change, and then suddenly they find a blood glacier. Which I was, I was, I was led astray because it was not actually blood. It was these little red one-celled organisms. So we were like, oh no, blood. And I said, you know, the first thing that I would think if I was on a glacier and I saw that. Iron oxide, like some kind of like you know rust or something like Very that. Very metal. Or algae. And they were like not metal. And they were like, oh my gosh, I bet it's algae. And it was well, it was little one-celled organisms that were red in hue, but then broke down in yeah. UV light very quickly. And uh, these things basically, uh, they got into the some melting water and a fox like they, they were it up. They were in the glacier for like thousands of thousands of years. Ah, and then now 10,000 years, I'm free. Time to conquer Earth. But fox. if you're a glacier. So basically, like, because of climate change, the glacier receded and then they were exposed to, and then they yeah. came, got in the meltwater. And a fox drank the meltwater and then ate a potato bug, wood uh, louse, or wood -louse. whatever you call it, roly-poly. Little thing. There's a little million, million names for them. And a beetle, and then those all, like... And then it sort of exploded and created a hybrid creature of all those three things. Yeah, because apparently this this little one cell organism will take other thing other creatures' DNA and like super combine it really quickly. And then uh, through this process, you got all sorts of exciting things like a crazy half fly, half uh, mountain goat thing. You got this giant bird of prey which had spiky things, which is probably spice. from like a. It looked like a mosquito, but mosquitoes are way not Austrian. Um, mosquitoes could be anywhere, honey. Too cold. Climate change. 
So it, it flying around and stinging people. Maybe it was a bee. I don't know. And uh, then you got this really cute little dog. And it's like, oh, dog. The dog was played by the dog actor Santos, actually. Yeah. Very nice It was in the dog. credits. Really so basically, this yeah. is the... It is like... It is like... It's like Birdemic if the message was... If the message was the only thing they kept from Birdemic. The climate change is bad, yo. Yeah. Leave the environment be. But everything else about it was good. <laughs> it, it, it's like the plot of the thing. Because it is like we're isolated, it's cold. Uh, but then, but it wasn't no, all that cold, though. It's, it's it was cold. chilly. Yeah, <laughs> it's chilly. not as cold and they're not as isolated. Oh, yeah. And um, But then it's like if the thing, instead of being the thing, is, is like the blue hot chick aliens from Mass Effect. You know how they reproduce? They choose a mate and then they do sort of sexy time things and then the blue one always gets pregnant mm -hmm. and uh, they, uh, it doesn't matter what race or what they have sex with, they, they take some of the DNA from the other one and mm -hmm. they bring it in and they combine it with their own species and then they create a new version of their species. I never played Mass Effect, I only played Dragon Age. I played it for like three hours twice and it was shit both times, but I know that part of the lore. Mm -hmm. So this alien, it takes other DNA from other things and combines it with theirs to create new versions of the race and you're not allowed to do it with someone else of the same ra of, of your race. Fair enough. So it's like that, crossed with the thing, and Petya is, if she watches this, is going to punch me in the fucking face next time she sees me for calling Mass Effect shit. You're allowed to think it's shit. If it would, you yeah, didn't like I mean, I've never played it. Petya's either. allowed to punch me in the fucking face. I guess so. But, yeah. But no, I mean, like, everything, like, it was very well acted. Um, you have, like... This woman who's playing like the minister of something, who's basically she's like awesome. Angela Merkel on steroids. Yeah, I, she's just going there, barking orders, punching people in the face, getting really, really angry in the face of monsters, cutting women open, and jamming red hot pokers into her leg because because you know, there was yar. a there was like there was a the one of the larvae was in her. Or something. So I after seeing this, I want to see like. A new remake of the thing where the star <laughs> is Judy Dench taking no shit. Just running around and beating people up. It was so fucking awesome. Yeah, like this is part where there's this huge or mountain Sandy goat. Talks, Vig. Yes, <laughs> this huge mountain goat slash fly slash it's, thing is like roar, and it's like I'm, like got its horns yeah. and it's coming through and she's like, was, hold on, I'll get to drill. And then she goes and gets like the ice borer drill and she says ah and like drills through the head of this thing and I was like, damn. It was like um, the EU is hardcore. The giant monster. It was kind of like uh, you're seeing the movie Razorback. Uh -uh. Of course, you've not well, seen of it. I I'm guessing at least one of you five people has seen it. It's by the director of Highlander. It was one of the films we made around the same time. I think a little bit afterwards, and it's about a fucking giant boar killing people in Australia. It's like it was like it was like that because it was so fucking big and ridiculous. Fucking giant boar. It's not as beautifully shot as Razorback, though. Razorback, that guy can do a really pretty looking shit film, and uh, Razorback is no exception. Right. But I uh, see, I feel bad because usually when it's a bad film, we have more to say, like, we have more to whinge yeah. about. But no, I really enjoyed it. Um, you got the, the lead is this drunk who uh, basically seems to be an Austrian channeling Santiago Sangre from. Uh, Beyond Reanimator, and I'm sure that you know that you've all seen Beyond Reanimator. If not, can you not just get Beyond Thunderdome? I mean, you're just saying words at this point. Words, 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 pretty words, much. words. No, but he, he's 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 a pretty cool guy. Like everybody's like, you really it's 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 hard to absolutely empathize with a lot with the scientists that are there because they're just kind of like assholes. Yeah, and um, except for Angela Merkel, every single woman in this just about is some degree of Kate McKinnon looking like. That's true. You know, yeah. the, 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 most of them are just a bit, but some of them look like, you know, in the DNA swapping things, it's like we have a human woman that has crossbred with Kate McKinnon and created these hybrids. She was born on my birthday. I thought she was, you know, created by, you know, the goddess of Kate mckinnon because she's not quite the same as the rest of us. No, I found this out from Kyle tweeting about it. Although I'm pretty sure she's younger than me, so yeah, so she was born on my birthday, not the other way around. Yeah, your birthday, not her birthday, you claimed it first. Ta -da. But yeah, so, no, I mean, it was good, and it was well shot. Although, like, there was parts of it where they're like, we're just not going to use Steadicam, because fuck that shit, we're going to use a handheld, and I'm like, stop it! Stop it! Yeah, people try to use handheld to make, things feel, uh, make the film feel more 
intimate and chaotic and oh, off-kilter, and it was a bit annoying. Uh, the Blood Glacier itself looks pretty dodgy, like, you know, because, you know, apparently it's too much to ask for them to go up and paint a fucking glacier red. It might have been, red. like, in, like, a national park or, like, a world heritage thing. Like, you can't go dying a glacier. It's like, you know, if you're going to make a movie called Blood Glacier, you should go up there and you should... You know, otherwise it's just, in painting, you, otherwise it's just, you don't have the self-respect that is needed for someone who's making a film called Blood Glacier you about a blood glacier. You can't dying a glacier. Yes, you can. Anyway. And you know, yeah, the woman, she got her eye, you know, blood in her eye, so it was like, you know, blood eyeball. And the guy that's cut in his head, guy, blood like, forehead. Like, uh, when he, sh he smashed her in the face. Yeah. When he was trying yeah. to get the gun. There's a lot of there blood. Was, there was actually a Chekhov's gun. That in like the first few minutes of the movie you see placed somewhere and at the end of the movie the guy's like, oh yeah, there's a gun that I put here. I'll just take that. I was like, check. I was gun. really hoping, I really wish that gun was handled slightly differently. It was like, you know, the drunk Santiago Sangre type guy uh -huh. uh, had got the gun and he was like, I don't know, because he was you know constantly hung over and, you know, scratching himself. If he'd taken the gun, if he, if he had it and he was like scratching himself with it and then he'd put it there mm -hmm. and then you discover that actually that's, that's empty and like the guy just, you know, has the gun but he doesn't actually have Fill it with bullets, and then they're like, "Oh no!" But well, it, was actually, it was a flare. Gun. It was a flare gun, so maybe it wouldn't have worked. Well, he did put it there because remember, it fell on the ground when he hit his head in the beginning. Yeah, was I was just thinking, it would. What my suggestion it would require a little bit of reworking of the script. But let's see what else. I guess the I guess the plot twist. Yeah, there is a plot twist. It is a that. shocking plot twist, and um, there is this woman gets face hugged by a giant wood louse, and her face gets sawed off. It is awesome. By a potato bug. The, the the model Actually, work. Actually, you know what? Comment below what you call a potato bug or roly poly or a wood louse or whatever. The model work on this is generally very good. The main problem is when they're trying to make the monsters move because they just sort of put the monster just above the bit of the camera and then it goes like, like that. And it looks really, really dodgy. It does. I mean, the thing, one of the reasons it's, its work ha holds up is because it could make it it didn't look like that. It didn't look. Nothing looked like a, a, a like a model on a track. They they were able to articulate things like that. Yeah. But no, still the last. Let's see. What else? What else can we say? Poor about little this? dog. Yeah, the dog died. He was crying. That was like the most tender part of a horror movie where they had to euthanize a dog. Was that? Was that? Well, the, but the dog actor lived. The dog was called Tinnitus. Yeah, I think that's kind of weird. Maybe it means something different in German than like ringing ear disease. <laughs> Maybe he's just he was just whiny when he was a puppy. Aww. Well, apparently his his first master was a hunter, and they both fell off a cliff, and um, the main character and his scientist girlfriend and apparently years previous found the hunter dead, and um, and found the dog injured and like nursed the dog back to health and stuff. Mm -hmm. But not in real life. In real life, it was actually a dog actor. It's all right. And then, of okay. course, you know, the the main character and his ex-girlfriend sort of rekindle the thing because, you know, nothing like being on a blood glacier to make straight people fall in love again because straight people are weird like that. I've seen yeah. movies, straight people, you can't deny it. Well, I mean, like, literally, like, she came back as a surprise without telling him. I mean, I kind of felt like she kind of wanted that to happen. It's possible. Except without all the mutants and horror. Let's rekindle our romance, except for not in a supernatural way. Question, straight people. Is there any situation which won't make straight people fall in love in a movie? I'm just interested because, you know, with gay people, generally it involves a lot of musical numbers or people being murdered or maybe some S&M no gear appearing you on screen. Stole, that's, that's my joke. You stole it from me I just know. now. Me and my friend Sam came up with that years and years and years ago well, because we figured that, see, in, in a movie where there's a straight romance, it's always like, even though we've only stood in the queue for five minutes at the bank already, I have such great feelings for you. And we're like, no. And Sam and I decided that in a gay film, at least there's a montage. Yeah. There's got to be a montage of many afternoons spent together. Yeah. So don't rip my jokes a off. A gay, gay movie would require at least two nights together on the Blood Glacier. Because we came up with that before I even met you, so. And in a lesbian movie, it would, be at least, it would be at least a month there so that then the woman can use their Blood Glacier against it. Mm. That's horrible. 
It's very horrible. It is. it is incredibly horrible. I am. I apologize well, completely. Post, they might be postmenopausal. You don't I, know that. I apologize. Apart from that, you know, they could. You know, the two lesbians could have penises. There's a lot of varieties of lesbian out there. I apologize. They could. Ha they could be. You know, post-op trans. They could be various kinds. I apologize. There is only one blood glacier, and that is the one in this film. There would still be a montage, though. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I, and I feel kind of bad because there was really nothing much to whinge about, except for the fact that there wasn't an English dub. But that's kind of. Myopic, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, um, English, depending on the type of film, I like dubs or not. Like with this one, even though I was told in the patron message to only watch the subbed version, I was like secretly disappointed, you know, not a secret now though, that, uh, that we didn't have an English dub because A, dubs make it more funny and B, if I, it, this, But there's still something about German, it's just such a direct language. Angry it's like, language. Angry. Because even if you're saying something like lovely and tender, like it just seems like so angry. Ich liebe den mein Schatz. What does that mean? Uh, I love you, my darling. I, I got. Wasn't there, there uh, like? Ich liebe dich. Wasn't there like a? There was. There wasn't there like a, a a tool song, that was just basically, it was a recipe, for like some kind of cake, but it was in German. Yeah. And they kind of scream it out with like people in the back going. Rah, and the title of it is like, and no, it translates to end no eggs or something like that. I, I remember a friend of mine telling me that. Just well, Ekliebrik Rimmenscheid is from Top Secret, geniusly uh, for this comedy set in the in East Germany during the Cold War. Mm -hmm. you, the, the East Germans are all Nazis for some reason, but every single time German is spoken, like, it's something that makes no sense in context. So you had one Nazi saying to another, Ekliebrik Rimmenscheid. It was hilarious. Apparently. I've been to Germany. I did. I was in Osnabrück for a few days and Berlin for one day. And I don't remember anyone yelling at me. Because everyone spoke I English not too much. a piss. No, yeah, we, when we were at the University of Osnabrück, it was a whole bunch of us um, psych students. And we, were, we got together with the business psych students. And we had like a language like seminar where like we tried to teach them like dairy slang, like the crack. And I tried to teach them like up the yonder and like some Philadelphia slang, but it didn't really take on. And so we had a little WhatsApp group going on, and one of the main girl, Anna, was really excited that she was going to take us to this one tavern. And she said to the, said to the group, you have to be there at, at exactly at 8 o'clock, I have reserved a table, and I am not taking a piss. Because we tried to teach them, like, you know, stop making the face. Don't put your finger up your nose. I didn't. You almost did. And so, but we were trying to teach them, like, you know, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just taking the piss. She's like, and I am not taking a piss. And we were like, before. I'm just extracting the urine. Oh, but Germany's nice. If you get a chance, you should go. But it's kind of expensive in Euro. But the uh, the we went other... to a Pizza Hut while you were there. <laughs> no, because because Suzanne and... didn't go to New York Pizza. No, because Suzanne and Cormac had never been to a Pizza Hut, and I was like, "You guys, Pizza Hut!" And me and and the other other girl Emma, who'd spent a few years in America, were like, "Oh my God, Pizza Hut!" There was a Dunkin' there was a Dunkin' Donuts in the Berlin station, and we literally drugged two lecturers and like all of our classmates, like, "Oh my God, you guys, Dunkin' Donuts is not a trail." And our lecturers looked at us we were out of our minds, and we were. But everybody got culottes and donuts, and they agreed with us that it was worth it, so. There's also a Dunkin' Donuts in the Amsterdam we train forgot, station. I forgot to go there. I was just mm. remembered a few days ago. I'm sorry. Send me Dunkin' Donuts, you guys. But, um, yeah, the other reason I wanted there to be a dub was whenever I do really? a patron uh, backseat critique, I always have an eye on possibly adding it to the review pile because if people want to know my thoughts on a film, generally I, I think they think that maybe it might make a review. This one, this is not review. This is not review movie material. A because there's not enough hilarity there to make it a funny review, and B because it is decent. Yeah, it's just really good. So, but you know that's why I wanted a dub because a, a dub is much easier to make fun of in a review than a sub. But you know it's not necessary in this one, guys. I recommend Check this. It out. I mean, now that, like, you know, what, what the crack is with it. As modern thing-ish horror movies go, it is better than the one in the boat with Lance Henriksen. I would wager to say that it is almost as good as the first season X-Files episode, Ice, which was inspired by the thing. So? Do you have any last mysterious words of mystery? If only, like, I knew any German words besides Bahnhof, which means the train station, and Rathaus, which means the town hall. But I like saying Banhoff because it sounds like something in a Game of Thrones, isn't it? Like, my lord, they're coming up the Banhoff. Don't worry, we'll cut them off at the pass. Guten Tag!